I will go ahead and start off with the intro. I know we have a couple people that will be back in a second, but I think they already know the first part of what I'm going to say anyway, so. Um, so does everyone, okay, who here knows what Mindshare, the new, the Mindshare committee is? Okay, so one does not. Okay, the, so the Mindshare, as, as it says up there, the Fedora Mindshare represents the outreach leadership in Fedora, which includes uh, docs, websites, ambassadors, design, marketing. Am I forgetting anything else, Brian? What all is in, in Mindshare? Essentially Everything that's not, not yeah. Oh yeah, that picture. Yeah, so everything over on that right side from here over is part of Mindshare. And so the idea is to hopefully get us to coordinate with the other teams and um, it all, Mindshare is also replacing what um, replacing FAMSCO for the ambassadors and so that's a little brief overview um, does anyone have any any questions or comments yet um, so I do not see Sumantro. I th thought he would be giving an overview of the new proposals. I, I really think that people uh, are either not coming because they don't find it to do because it was a bit important stuff they had to ask. Yes. Uh, and the other reason maybe is just they don't trust the uh, I will. I, we will go back to that topic later because since he's writing coming up with the drafts of the new proposals I think I think he would be the best one to talk about it so also the budget is being restructured what used to be the regional budgets so that it is all allocated to Mindshare and Mindshare will be the one approving event proposals which I guess are we effectively there now because the regions are basically out of money yeah, because I think I, I was looking at the budget. So I was looking at the budget site, and so what we had done was go ahead and give a fourth of the budget to the regions, like what we've done before. But it appears roughly from the budget site that um, the regions are pretty much out of the budget, in, out of that budget anyway. So even though we haven't really updated. Um, some of the documentation yet future requests will pretty much have we're just going to direct those to Mindshare anyway because we're not going to push it out another quarter and change the budget again um, and our idea is to try to make it a I mean not a big long bureaucratic process especially if someone is wanting a smaller event um, especially we're trying to promote release parties and it, you can get a hundred dollar budget for a release party and only a certain amount of it is supposed to go for food pretty much by at having a decent proposal and asking for it not requiring a bunch of meetings and everything um, we want it for people to get stuff done because if you make the process really hard then people will be less likely to do it um, do, you want to talk, do you want to talk about the new proposals 
Or, well, Sumantro is writing them, so. Bex uh, can bring them up on the screen if you want to show something. So, this is the agriculture person? Uh, yeah, if you want to start with that. Okay. And just talk about what our plans are huh. for the others, for Ambassador and Emeritus. Okay. So to start with, uh, I am Shimantro, and uh, here is what we have. So we wanted to create a process which is less frictionless in terms of budget, and it's very accessible to everyone who wants to like kind of promote Fedora and talk about Fedora, but not in terms of just talking. They have to be some sort of long time or a decent contributor in terms of the project. So we came out with a way by which we could achieve this and that is by this program called Advocate. So where we go ahead and we say, hey, if you are a long time contributor and you want to spread the knowledge about what you are contributing exactly to. So let's say I am a QA guy and if I want to spread knowledge about how I do the QA process and onboard the community with me, this is exactly what I can do. Now, since advo since ambassadors were primarily responsible for outreach events, we kind of created a template by which advocates can go ahead, request for such budgets and activities like NB said. You can go hold release parties requesting for a $100 budget and there will be no question asked and you, it would be approved. So by virtue of your work, you become an advocate when you are ready to kind of take more responsibilities towards your goals representing your region you kind of move towards more of like the ambassador program which is currently designed to like handle more of regional responsibilities but if you want to be a face of fedora in your area i think advocate is the best way to go now most of the people who are ambassadors right now um some of them due to work pressure and timings, they kind of miss out on this opportunity of mentoring new people. And since we want that, I mean, we don't want that. We kind of, uh, new people tend to come in and they move towards the, the very known name of the names from the area. And let's say if he, if NB is a known name and everyone goes to him and he cannot give time, most of the like, attention kind of gets divided and finally people lose interest so we kind of went ahead and said hey there there is something called uh, we are always grateful to whatever in like nb or the ambassador has done but we are going to move them to emirati ambi status which basically emirati status which would basically say we are grateful that you have helped for so long and so so much but since it, you cannot like you know you cannot direct everyone guide everyone now you can like take a step back and then whenever you feel you are ready to go again just send us a request and we will resume your sponsorship to ambassadors program so that's that's mostly what emirates Am ambassadors have been like situation for now and i think we we would have a process around it very soon and uh, so this session was mostly to have an update on whatever we are doing, right? Bex? Yeah, oh, yes, feedbacks. My plan, my plan for this session was just kind of to give a little, I mean, to give a little update on what we've been doing uh, back. Okay. Uh, back in March, I believe it was, we had the Mindshare Committee FAD, um, and I think we made a lot of progress. And then um, a lot of the time here, I want to spend just discussing ideas, uh, what people think about the things we're working on currently, and so on. Did you have anything else to say about the... Uh, nothing much. So okay. We have Ambi, right? So pretty much talk about ambience okay. and uh, see like if we have if we can come up to a, a proposal where 
Okay, yeah, that's pretty much everything I had on the stuff yeah. I just wanted to talk about. So now I think, um, does anyone have any comments or questions about the things we've mentioned so far? I want to spend most of the time here brainstorming, working on making plans for what Mindshare should, should do. I was hoping to have more of our committee here, but quite a few people, several people couldn't be here, I think. But to be honest, for me, this looks like uh, what we intended with the ambassadors maybe eight years ago, yeah. when when we s when the ambassador project or sub project or whatever we want to call it start growing, most people in where CLA plus five, CLA plus 10, and uh, there were people were doing ambassador stuff beside the, the regular contributions to Vedora. And for me, this looks likely we want to have the kind of a super ambassador and uh, kind of uh, make it hard for people who just uh, want to tell people about Fedora and are not so much engaged in this whole uh, ecosystem, right? I think the, the idea behind it is pretty much the actual ambassador group is not, we're not really proposing changing Beca I mean, being an ambassador, but we're wanting to make it easy for people. Okay, say um, you're say hypothetically. I mean, you're someone who works in um, engineering or something, or you and you just want to have a release party where um, wherever you live, and that way we're wanting to make it easy for people to do small events without having to actually join the ambassadors team yeah so we're wanting to make it we're wanting to make it easier for people to do stuff hey Nick can I can I can yes, I summarize yes. I think I think it, there's there's four main points I think that, that summarize it I think it's we want to reduce the friction for things like release parties or, or small events so that it's not a lot of bureaucracy to try to get through so so that that's that's step number one um, step number two is an advocates program that's that's easier to get into the the ambassador than the ambassadors program is a um, little less less work a little less less rigor rigmarole easier easier for people who aren't already engaged in other th other things in Fedora to get in and and share what they they've learned so far um, and then in then my fourth point was for people who have been an ambassador but have kind of stepped away from doing that and are focused on other things set them as an emeritus ambassador so they still get that recognition for the great work that they did but then it's easier for us to tell okay who's actively engaged as an ambassador and who has been ambassador but has stepped away so I think it's really those four main points does that does that help clarify the uh, another thing that that uh, we can uh, we get when we made the fat there is that normally people think that they need to be an ambassador to attend events. So m with the advocate program, like uh, it's not like we want to have a, a super ambassador that will be developing CSAT meeting and then he will be an ambassador, but to let him uh, have a way to go through the budget process easily and do a conference representing Fedora. Yeah, I don't know if I explain a little bit, but the idea is that there was kind of uh, if you are not an ambassador, you should not be organizing events, and that's what we want to change that that kind of thinking. You, if you want to organize a, a small event or attend to an event uh, and give a speech talking about I don't know Fedora modularity or Fedora CI or or Atomic Working Group, you don't need to be actually an ambassador because the advocate program is an easy to enter program, and you can get funding to attend to an event, right? Just hold an event, that's it. That? Just hold any event, that's it. You're an advocate. So, my, so then if I want so if I want to make an appeal to the advocate group and say, hey, I'm I was on I'm working on your book, but uh but I want to you know, one of your oh wait, no, the deal is my what did I get it with the what did I get it with the uh yeah, you still just give it in the 
but that so so as a member of a team any team i'm able to uh i'm able to ask the advocate program for for the cash i would need to do some sort of an event right of of a cer of a size that i determine that's correct okay um are there any plans to have a a program where we're identifying people who are specifically um, ready for public speaking? Okay, so here's the thing. That is exactly what the point of Advocates was. It was designed for people who become advocates oh, by virtue of their work. So for example, if he is from marketing I think and he, he needs the mic Hey, uh, yeah, so if he is from marketing and he wants to speak about how to get started with marketing, but he needs an event yes. and he has a release party, he can go ahead, speak and get more contributors to help him out. And that's exactly improve his, improves his situation. And for specifically public speaking, there is nothing. But yes, we would love to have something uh, on those lines so we can address uh, let's say you know if I am not a public speaker but I am a regular contributor to the project uh, here are a couple of like videos or some kind of a master class which I can attend and then I can be a better public speaker in those lines like yeah like understanding very directly the key talking points for example one that Matt pointed out in the keynote uh, was was bleeding edge versus leading edge yes and talking about fedora in t in the terms that we want people to identify and and um, yes and, so th this and exactly another thing that I mean ambassador advocates has advised and which is you they better work with an ambassador so every one of us tells the same story in the same manner and we do not come I mean we do not come communicate any discrepancy that way we kind of reduce as as much as difference of opinion that we can have so that you know it's easier for everyone to use a single templated out stuff and roll it wherever iterate it as many times as they want and still still be correct I think that's something that possibly the marketing team could work on is coming up with things like what David was saying about um, like that we're not bleeding edge things to talking points to help people re know how to reach to um, common questions you might get because I know I've heard that at events too about like well Fedora is like the bleeding edge and I don't want my computer to bleed yeah, well, yeah. actually that's one of the key points of the talk tomorrow in marketing is that we get completely disconnected from the ambassador program, but like completely disconnected. We are collecting talking points that ambassadors are not using it. So one of the key points of, of the marketing uh, plan for the next six months to one year will be to recover this connection and tell them, you know, this is what we need to do to talk. Please try to avoid to to say things if and um, if you have a doubt please come to us or come to the council or, or whatever you need to talk to ask but we need to to um, reconnect the ambassadors with the messaging that is coming from the council through the marketing team so that's one of the things we need to achieve I see it completely the opposite way. I think uh, the ambassadors need to feed their feedback into marketing. And marketing uh, has to follow uh, the input from the ambassadors because they are the people who are out there and speaking to the, TV, to the people. I, okay, I'm going to answer that question a little bit. Um, you certainly need to close the loop, right? The, the feedback loop definitely needs to be closed. But there need to be answers that are very clear and concise for advocates to, to understand in the first place. For example, <laughs> for example, when someone asks, uh, "What happens if I get sued for for using Fedora?" Right, that's not something you want to close the feedback loop on from the from the ambassador's feed from the ambassador's response first. You want to make sure that you have an active answer for that in the first place. 
also um, we come to realize because the marketing team was reduced to me and another guy sure. uh, that is really hard to work in messaging if we are just two persons so now we divide the functions of marketing uh, if it was not published yet, it, it, it still in the mailing list because uh, uh, we need to focus before in ambassadors. But the messaging is going through Mindshare and marketing will be the execution part only. That's the way we, uh, we want to close that gap with ambassadors. But it's, uh, it's planned and it's blocked because we need to figure out this first and receive all the feedback, document everything, and then go through other plans. But f definitely is on the way. Uh, any other question or follow up? Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh, if you can elaborate a bit more about how budgets and uh, the payment process will look like in the future. Uh, we have Brian there, so. Uh, maybe uh, also a remark. Uh, I think it's good uh, that uh, you have some kind of permission by default for low amounts. That uh, is what you try to achieve with the advocate. I think that's a good idea. And I'm not a big fan of looking backwards, but uh, we had this in the beginning that a proven ambassador was able to just uh, use an amount of money, but uh, of course it's not. It's it's Red Hat's money, so uh, I, I think there needs some kind of a control instance for that, but I think it's a, a step in the right direction. But uh, I, because I'm concerned directly uh, with doing the payments, I would like to know um, how it will be handled in the future. So uh, do we handle then the payments also for India, as example, which I would like to do? So that's what I like to hear. I'm going to rudely make you repeat your last sentence because there was a scheduling emergency that flashed on my screen, and I am very sorry, but I stopped listening to you. Cause, so could you repeat just the last sentence? I had everything up until then. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to know um, how payments in the future will be processed and handled uh, because uh, regional to, I think, a global budget, uh, this also reflects on the credit card holders. Uh, so... Uh, Okay. I, I, I'm happy to handle payments also for uh, other regions in the world, but if yes, uh, how uh, this will be handled. So um, kind of a couple things to update. For reasons completely unrelated to the individuals in those regions, we currently don't have working credit cards in APAC and LATO. And that's, that's a thing that has we've been trying to figure out how to resolve this. Um, there have been some technical challenges there. So we definitely need to move to having the individuals who do have the um, community cards able to pay across regions and able to do it in an effective way. One of the blocks that we've had right now has been that if you're in region A, it's hard to get visibility into what's going on in region B because they often have completely different processes for what the ticket status is, whether it's private or not. Um, how do you know when a ticket is actually ready to be reimbursed? Is there supposed to be an event URL in there? Is it the something there's a there's a companion ticket somewhere else? Like every region's done it differently. And at the Mindshare fad, um, we came up with the idea of some terribly named finance team because it had the word Bex and Cake in it. Um, but um, I think it was the Cake Warriors. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. But what we did come up with was this idea that we should ask the cardholders if they're willing and the treasurers if they're willing to work across the regions. And because everything was going to funnel through a single process that we're going to explicate here, then it would be very easy for these folks to know. Um, from a reimbursements perspective, we've been doing a lot of experimentation with alternative ways of getting money to people so that we can also return money to contributors in ways that make more sense. Um, traditionally, the project had always returned money to contributors in the form of U.S. dollars via PayPal. And that was inconvenient for the vast majority of our actual contributors because they don't use the U.S. dollar as their functional currency. And in several countries of the world, PayPal is not an acceptable form of payment because even if they can receive it in some countries, you can never withdraw the cash. So. We've been looking at trying to do that as well. We've been using TransferWise to uh, great effect. And then we've also been relaxing the currency rule. So like if you spent your money in euros, you get euros back because that's, how that's what you have to pay your credit card bill in. 
Um, so those two things, I think, are, are, are answers to your question. And I think the idea of trying to pick a committee of people who can really help us process transactions would be very useful here. Okay. So I suppose that uh, for the details written down, uh, this is uh, what you're working on right now, because then I need to access uh, other uh, Pagur or Pagur or however you want to call so that, uh, sessions or, or, or systems uh, instances? So what we've been looking at is potentially the idea of asking the Mindshare Committee's details to be focused, much like this document here. By the way, this is a pull request in the Mindshare Pagur if you want to read it on your own screen. Um, this doesn't tell you how to get your money back. It tells you what you're allowed to do. The how you get your money back in this lives in the budget repository. Okay. That way we can have a single uniform set of rules for how the project manages its money so that you don't have different rules based on the day of the week, the person you talked to, the region you're in. Um, and I think that that's going to help a lot here because then we might have cardholders who are not ambassadors. They're just people who that's the form of contribution they want to make. Maybe they're actually accountants, and they, that is how they wish to participate in the project. Um, and then they can get access to the budget repo where it will be clear, this is what I reimburse, this is not ready for reimbursement. Um, so that's, that's how I think we're hoping to do that. One thing that we, we talked about a lot at the FAD was the current situation we're in is caused partially by there being so many undocumented rules. So can we simplify the rules and document them? Like all of the weird, ugly, hard bits and like give it to a team that's dedicated to that form of weird, ugly, hard bit where it becomes simple for them. And in uh, more simpler terms, the 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 way we uh, we try to manage this is to release the the task of handling money from ambassadors to mindshare and then allow people that handle money as a job maybe or they want to contribute only in that way do not require to pass to the whole ambassador process to get into the project to help so that's that's the main goal here and make the ambassador focus in their in their definition. They need to be the face of Fedora. They don't need to to be mm, concerned about how the money is being wasted. You just, you just, he just need to go to event, organize events, and speak to people because there are people, people in the in the description. Okay, so this will also mean that uh, future credit card holders will not have. Uh, uh, any longer the right to make any judgment decisions uh, as we have at the moment uh, because at the moment we had this kind of rule uh, that we can uh, approve until 400 uh, euros or 500 US dollars uh, if it's urgent and if a judgment uh, decision is needed and enough yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, uh, it was written down. Uh, uh, I made uh, the old uh, uh, payment process. Uh, maybe you remember the weird graphics that I have done, um, which no nobody understood. But um, yeah, so but for for these people, maybe also then we have other rules. Then that's the question. So um, in at the FAD, what we talked about was the idea of administrative versus ministerial. So ministerial is an action that you, you will perform it when all of the check boxes are checked yes. And an administrative action is one where you have to make a decision. And the goal was to try and push the administrative decision earlier in the process so that we have things like the, you're doing a release party. We're done here. You're administratively approved. These are the specific check boxes you must tick in order to be reimbursed. We're done. Um, and then the, the cardholders can go, the three check boxes are checked, reimburse. We expect the cardholders to still be fiduciarily um, appropriate. So, you know, if it comes in on the receipt and it says, I don't know, they bought $7,000 worth of computing on a $100 authorization for food, we expect you to throw up a flag and not just approve the charge. Um, you know, if there's questions, we expect people to look at it. But the hope is that we won't need the emergency release of a treasurer making decisions 
about approving events because the community will actually be able to function and act and approve those. And you could argue that the work that you all have been doing um, in the regions where that rule exists has been critical because the community there hasn't been able to effectively make those decisions. And we also discussed um, that, I don't remember what, we were just throwing around numbers, but anything up to a couple hundred dollars or something, one member of the Mindshare Committee could just say, this sounds good, do it. And it not, not every decision, even if it's not a release party, not necessarily every decision will require a vote of the committee. Just one member saying, kind of basically kind of like the card holders now, yeah. where you can say the this, they can make a the judgment. The judgment decision that we do. It. Yes. I think there's two important points there. Uh, one, you know, that, that it doesn't require the, the whole committee to wait till their next meeting to make a decision. Um, and two, it, it's you know make that public so people have a chance to you know a, a comment period so you know maybe one person on the on the committee plus waiting 24 hours or 48 hours so that people have a chance to say oh that doesn't sound right you know before it's approved but but process down to where you can have a decision in two or three days not two or three weeks or two or three months yeah in, in North America we've made it so pretty much everything is approved by our meetings or well it used to be at least but certain things Andrew would just pay like if I needed shipping supplies we didn't vote on it I just ordered them and sent him the receipt if I needed boxes or we use UPS for shipping and I, I'm going to interrupt us and ask a question of the audience because uh, we're all the audience and we're all the speakers I, I'm hearing a lot of people in agreement expressing the same ideas with different words and so I'm kind of curious is there anyone who actually disagrees fundamentally or partially with what they're hearing about we're going to make small dollar amounts easy to get to we're basically erring on trusting people and we're going to make larger dollar amounts be approved through this other process that may have multiple tiers of ways of making decisions so that we can hopefully get to decisions faster and more uniformly in regions. And then we're going to use a centralized set of the same processes to reimburse people across the project without regards to whether it was, say, a release party, an ambassador event, or a Fedora Women's Day. Um, is there anybody who has, like, a fundamental objection to that? Uh, are you going to handle all requests around the, the world, like only you? I think you will be the bottleneck, no? Mindshare committee will. I am not going to be a bottleneck here. I do not want to be the sole responsible person, and the world should not stop if I get sick or go on vacation. Uh, I, I have no disagreement, but maybe a, a wish for the future Mindshare. Um, so that what I see is that maybe at the moment it's necessary but uh, that's very focused uh, inside uh, our own community uh, and I think we, we, we should much much more look into how we get a message out what is our goal uh, with Mindshare do we focus on users that become uh, contributors one day how we do that um, I have good experiences uh, going to universities and teaching there, but there need to be some enablement for that. Uh, then also some kind of some controversial things like going to um, regions where maybe uh, people are poor and uh, underrepresented, and uh, maybe also uh, also political issues uh, evolve um, to to support these communities. Um, and I think that's a wish uh, that Mindshare would focus on giving a more clear vision uh, what ambassadors, marketing, how they can feed each other feedbacks and how they go out and spread the message instead of focus too much inwards. I understand that you are at the moment in a state where you need to do that because uh, if you are not structured you will not get so, um, to the next step. You've hit the nail on the head, as the idiom goes. Um, that is actually almost 100% of what we tried to consume ourselves with at the Mindshare FAD, is this 
the mechanics of reimbursement or the mechanics of, I don't know, becoming an ambassador had consumed 100% of the conversation space within the project in most regions. And the actual act of going to the university was a distant 1%. Um, and so we want to flip that around. And that actually comes kind of to the second part of, of what we talked about, which was Council has asked that we try to focus on the additions and the objectives as those are our desired target audiences. This is not to say we shouldn't go anywhere else or do anything else, but like when people come to us, if they go, I want to spend you know, $10,000 to hold an event to get to people, all of whom are Python developers, and therefore they're going to use Workstation, they're going to use Server, and they're going to use the Python Classroom Lab, versus I want to spend $10,000 to get to 1,000 people, all of whom are llama farmers. And they might choose to install Fedora on their home PCs to watch movies, because we don't currently have any llama-specific spins, remixes, or software. That allows Mindshare to make a decision about the value of those two $10,000 spins. But I think you're 100% right that the real question is how do we feed back that loop of the ambassadors were in the, the streets, so to speak, and everybody went, we have no idea what modularity is. And so how do we better tell that story? Or do we want to tell the story of modularity? And, and actually, there's other oh, several problems for example, uh, even if you can show the the graphic when there is all the teams in Fedora. That one, there is a lot of disconnection between, for example, uh, or or even in the objective of each working group on each team. For example, uh, come-ups have this problem, uh, marketing have this problem. Um, uh, for example, there uh, a specific example that people was using outdated design material. And there is a tons of problems that come to be solved by measure in the time, but the, the, uh, we focus primarily in solve the ambassador problem, but we are really aware that it's another s stuff to work on and we are trying to split the time to work on several things but m our main focus was on this because it was a the harder problem to to work on and the most big audience to reach because there is four regions to reach with among ambassadors I th I think we should try new ways to speak to the people, like uh, YouTube videos. Uh, that not necessary. If we have to spend money or something, we record a video once, and the video will be maybe forever online or something. So I'm going to call you out a little bit. Can you make that video, like? Um, and the reason I bring this up is one of the things that took so long to get the, uh, the advocates piece written was we fell victim to our own problem of we have lots of ideas and no one put it together in the dock. And honestly, it was, it was sitting down, him <laughs> stop that. It was him sitting down and just banging out a document and then we dedicated an hour to like everybody pushing on it to get it to this polished form. So I think that we need to stop asking for permission and just start doing. And that's the whole thing we're doing with advocates, the whole thing we're doing with release parties. I think you're 100% right that in some places in the world we need to be using social media or YouTube, etc. differently. It may be that it has a massive impact in Brazil and a terrible impact in France. I don't know. But what's stopping you from producing that to be successful? What's stopping you from getting to the university? What's stopping you from going to an event and talking about modularity? Let's unblock that rather than say we should do X but then no one wants to do it. Also, I want to encourage all of you and to reach the marketing mailing list and or reach uh, via the IRC marketing with your ideas. We need ideas. B because of uh, 
not only there is no uh, universal strategy that is going to work everywhere in the world. So right now I'm pushing the podcast. Um, I have a well, it, it was original my the YouTube channel to make other videos that different than flock talks because if you go through the the channel, you only going to find flock talks. And I think we, I have a plan for use the Instagram account. Uh, we have a social media team that works on Twitter. So you know your region because it's your region. You know your country. If you have an idea how to reach your people, come here, tell me. I want to do that, and you need what you need to do it. You need uh, permission in the YouTube account, I can do it. You need permission in the social media, I, maybe I cannot do it, but I can reach the one who is going to help you. But try to get the ideas out to us to see how can you help you to make the idea, that idea happen. So what time is it? Because I think we have a two blocks sessions. Yeah, well. Okay, then, yeah, l let's, let's resume. Oh. Oh. So, do we just want to start? Do you want to open with that? Because I'm happy to. Yeah, I will give Justin a mic. So one of the things I wanted to cover from, given some of the context of Mindshare being focused on the other outreach teams, this is a recent experience that I had trying to organize an event in North America. But I'm trying really, like I was putting in a lot of effort to try to self-educate myself on the Fedora objectives and to try to figure out a strategy for bringing them to an event at a university I was planning to organize. And so in the effort of trying to find like some kind of like talking points or like marketable bullet points or something I, could, something I could bring to try to help me understand what makes sense or what doesn't make sense to bring to this event. Uh, there was, in the things I could find without asking someone, it was not easy for me to find resources. And then I spent the time, like I, I reached out to the points of contact for the objectives and I tried to ask for where I could find information and I had a v either no response to some response to very engaged and one of the things I kind of wanted to pilot or, or try to drive Mindshare to do is to be the connecting piece between the objective leads and, or not just the leads, but the objectives and the people behind the objectives with the outreach and marketing teams. So one of the things I actually wanted to try to propose is if we try to work at the council level as Mindshare to make the part of like proposing an objective with like in Fedora to have an objective recognized by the Fedora Council to have a relationship with some of the outreach teams like say marketing for Eduard I know he's been trying to do a lot of these things and he's asking for ideas and how to how to find these things to promote and share and like I think of like from having d taken the time to lead marketing team like I think of the talking points that we did for releases like that format was invaluable like to me like when I was going to an event those talking points were like my Bible for what I would I would refer to like to freshen up on something before I or for the last release as I go to this event, and they had mixed they had mixed reviews about how well used they were, but that format was invaluable to me, and I feel like having an equivalent format for the objectives would be an extremely valuable resource for ambassadors and for marketing. So like that's what I kind of wanted to just open a, a topic for discussion is better integration of the Fedora ob via, via Mindshare to the outreach teams. And whether like, and, and if there's not, you know, if, if, it, if this all makes sense, then like, I think that should we try to drive a relationship there and to try to work at a council level? As I, I feel like it's very critical to make this relationship stronger because I, I I've had a very like I, I've had to work really hard to find this information for this event, and if you know I've been involved in the project for three years, and I'm having to go through three different e legs of email chains just to get an answer of like what is our objective? What do we talk about our objective at a Fedora event? 
I know there's going to be very few people that are going to do that work to get that information. So to me, I, the problem I'm trying to solve, or I'm trying to solve in my head is, how do we unearth the information from the engineering teams, like from the engineering side of the project to the outreach teams? I, I think it would be good. I think it's a good idea. I think it would be nice if all of the objectives um, would just give us some little notes on a basic of what is this? What should? What are some things, talking points that we should talk about? I think uh, maybe I'm horribly wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But I think the the problem you are addressing is hard to work on because objective is the future in the project, not the now in the project. So how can you reach people if this is something that is being developed yet? But at the same time, we're still talking about modularity <laughs> and But modularity have three years in, in the made, so. The answer that we don't talk about our, obje oh. our objectives at Fedora events, like where. So then, if 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 these objectives aren't in a place to to share or to talk about it, they're the future. Then what do our ambassadors? What is the content we're asking our ambassadors to go out and represent and advocate for? Yeah, I, I mean, I get your idea, but at least for me, it will always be depending on your audience. But for example, for a newcomer to go, even if he's a, a really good developer, just go through the all modularity developing, it will be really hard. So I'm not sure it's, it's I'm not saying don't talk about it, but having keynotes or, 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 or real facts of, of what they are doing, will be hard if they are still working on it. For example, the IoT okay. is still, is still is not a SIG yet, even, so they are... Rather than, I think that both of you are right. Um, I think some of our objectives have reached a point in their life cycle where they are mature enough that there is a, a message we need to convey. Mm -hmm. And you're right that other of our objectives are still in the development phase, and there's not an outward bound messaging. I think what I heard Justin say was, for the ones where we're supposed to have a message, we don't know what that message is, and we need a mechanism by which we discover that message. So the Mindshare Committee has a representative on council. Um, that position is currently held by somebody who's um, away, so perhaps we should consider filling that position with someone else for a while, and I've already talked to the person who's away, um, so he would be okay with it. Um, and that would give us a platform to bring up during the uh, council meetings, especially when we're doing objective reports, for us to look somebody like, I'll pick on Peter, to look Peter Robinson in the face and go, you just gave an objective report on IoT. Are we ready to talk about this or not? Is there a thing here? And like last month, Peter's response would have been, no, we do not have a clean build. If you go out and talk, there's literally nothing for someone to touch. I believe next month Peter's response would be, yes, there is now a thing, and it runs on these particular boards, and this is what we could talk about. But we can use our representative to counsel to ask those questions. Right now, I can ask those questions on chair, and I've, I've taken a note to do so. And I think we can, frankly, open a council ticket to request that data where it's appropriate. Because both of you are right. We want to talk about objectives, but we don't want to talk about the ones that aren't ready to be talked about. So I think we can open a ticket in the council to require the objective leader to inform when they are ready to go out. So I, I would say two things. The first is the objective leads and, uh, and the additions do present regular reports to council. So to some degree, these teams, we all need to be willing to listen to the report they're producing, not demand that they reproduce the report in a format we like better. So we should 100% be paying attention to those things. 
Um, and in fact, I would even challenge this group in particular further by saying, if you look back at the previous council reports, some of the sub-project reports are amazingly good material for things like just outright advertising the project and gaining mindshare. The one that comes to my mind most recently is the one on the Fedora Red Team. Um, like, that was just a really good report, or the one on the the disk thing, which I can't remember the name of at the moment. It was a really good report. Like, it's worthy of packaging on its own. Um, but I think we need to listen and not demand. The other is that I think it's extraordinarily reasonable for us to ask council to do something like what documentation did. Documentation asked the program manager to modify the change process so that release notes are a required part of the deliverable so that there's a process that recognized the balance between the number of contributors we have in documentation and the number of change makers we had and made it so that docs could actually integrate to hopefully produce proper release notes with each release. That's in progress. If we have something similar, we should definitely ask for council to say, hey, like, you know, as a part of the objective reports, we would like to see a summary in there that says these are the things we're ready to go talk to the world about. That's one slide, that's one set of statements, whatever. That's, I think, a great way for us to both listen and then ask for things in a better format. Because if you ask me to give a presentation on modularity, but you don't tell me that's what's important to you, I may not include it. But if you tell me what's that's important to you, that's a m very small incremental level of extra work for me. Um, so we can just be upfront about those kinds of asks as well. Yeah, actually, for example, uh, I'm going to put myself as, as example. In the last, uh, in the last fleet sold uh, is the f the Latin American f f Intel Fest we held in whole Latin America. I talk about modularity, but it was me who was reaching the information. I talked with Landon, I talked with Adam, I put all the the slide they have together and produce a. A, a slide set for myself, but I agree with you. There should be a place when I can just have the keynotes to to be able to understand all this material and put it out to the world. But for example, the other example is how can you talk about IoT, for IoT, if you don't have anything yet, and it's a current objective. So do we not we need to have this this balance, and I think we are using the, the council. It will be the best thing to do using our representative in, in, in the council. So a couple of months back, uh, in India, we had something in Whipple's College. It was called the Install Fest slash Hack Fest. So where Cheyenne gave a talk on infrastructure, and there was an Install Fest which was going on. So what we created out of it, we created a kind of a template of installing Fedora in any kind of environment, be it on bare metal, virtualization, hypervisor, server, cloud, workstation, whatever that we could on a single block of text with links. And that acted kind of like a template for most of the people who wanted to do install fest type of events, wherever they wanted to reproduce them. We had to do for every release. So let's say it was done in 27. Someone wants to do it in 28. We just had to update the links and it would act like a bare minimum boilerplate. So let's say if I say I want to do an install fest, I can be pointed to one wiki which has all the prerequisites, whatever that I was, what I'm supposed to do in that event and how and what are kind of an examples as in the reports and the blog post of this is exactly how people did it. There can be YouTube videos, there can be uh, presentation links which can be reused over and over again like let's say you made a modularity slide I can I want to do a modularity event but I have no clue what it is so probably there can be one template which talks about this is an event by which you reach out to audience if you are talking about modularity this has five resources one of the resources is your slides and I know okay you presented it so if I talk to you it's easier for me to understand how you reached out, what your problems were, and if I have a better solution, I can probably implement it. And when I am done, I am supposed to share my experiences on the same boilerplate template, which can be then reused and by any other ambassador. So this is one of the things which I learned from Mozilla because they have been doing something like this for years now. So they have something called a reps program, which is similar to our ambassadors program. And they have something called assets.mozilla.org which has almost all slideshows, all videos, and they have 
literally event templates for all kind of events that they do. So if someone comes up with a mixed event template, they can even create their own event template out there and say, hey, you know what, we want to do this kind of an event and this is how it should look like. And if let's say they run it and that becomes successful, we go ahead and run it in all other places of the world, whoever is willing to run it that way, right? And that gives us more room to explore because we right now have release parties, fads, hack fest, those are the only three type of events that we generally do and install fest a couple of times, but we don't have any other things like a um, specific crack of how things would look like if we have a one day session on, let's say, what modularity is, building modules and pushing them. We probably do not have any template or guideline or anything for that matter to say how it can be done. So if that can be put out somewhere, it's easier for almost all advocates and ambassadors to refer that as a permanent boilerplate Unless, I mean, you know, always approved by council as a source of document which can be referred to. And then if something changes, we change that. And anyone can repeat and re-execute it any part of the world. And actually, uh, just uh, thinking on top of my head, an object lift probably is going to say you the, docu the documentation is there. You know, the, if you go through the um, through the council documentation, there is a part of talking about the objective. Maybe it's just one paragraph, but that is random. Uh, yeah. But I will be they going to say this is the key point of the objective. If you want to build deeper than that, go to a meeting or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just making uh, an assumption that if they don't willing to help, but that I don't know. They, it's not that way, but. The information is there. Yeah, I I just want to confirm that because I'm I think I'm the worst packager in the world, but even I got it uh, done to teach uh, packaging with the documentation that we have in uh, Fedora and go to yeah places and teach people how to start packaging, and I think uh, that can also be done with new stuff. Uh, but it's right, the documentation uh, maybe needs to be updated for new stuff. If it's specific specifically for the objective documentation, I find that that documentation is written for an, a very technical audience, not the audience of ambassadors or outreach teams. So finding a bridge there is like that's why I'm a little bit mixed. That's of just like kind of like chalking it up that if the inf the information is there, you have to just go and dig for it and find it because it's like if the answer is like to watch a 60 minute video to find the five minute piece that I'm really looking for, I have to summarize how I want to relay that information and like at an event, am I really understanding that or am I just like repeating this five minutes piece that was like seemed relevant for me? Like I don't know. Like it, it's. So I think I, I, I think you've 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 touched on it there, which is there are talks I will not give about Fedora because I am not, and this is not imposter syndrome, but I'm just not technically competent in that area. I have a package that I maintain. I would never lead a packaging workshop because I've literally done my one package. I can't tell you any of the other idiosyncrasies that occur in packaging other things. On the other hand, and I'm picking on Jared because he's not looking at me, I would expect Jared could leave a packaging workshop literally right now because he's done so much packaging. Um, and so I, I guess I would turn that around by saying one of the things that the advocate program emphasized was the idea that you should be an existing contributor in an area of the project. One of the things that I heard you say was that the original ambassador cadre in Fedora were all like CLA plus 10 because they were extraordinarily active people in the project. As we bring on people in the project whose first objective is advocacy, I think that they're going to need to make decisions about what they're competent as well as comfortable to speak about. And in some cases, the challenge you're running into is that Objective X did a crappy job of conveying their information. And in some cases, what you may be running into is that you are not able to present on Objective X because you don't have time to delve into it and learn it, even if you potentially have those skills. And then I guarantee that we could sit down and come up with an objective that neither of us will ever understand 
because it's just in an area of math or science or something that we don't have. Um, so like, I don't want ambassadors to ever, at least personal opinion here, not F cake, but personal opinion. I don't want an ambassador to feel compelled to give a talk on a topic they don't understand. I don't want an ambassador to ever feel compelled to give a talk on a topic they don't agree with or don't care about. But I do want somebody to be able to go, you know, my heart and soul is in X and I'm going to go out and talk about it. And then the committee can, you know, the project, the committee, the project can make the decision about how much financial resource we wish to commit to that message. But we're not going to block you. Um, and if you're having trouble finding the information on the objective, we need to figure out which of those three it is. And if it's just crappy information dispersal, let's go back to those guys. If it's they're not ready yet, let's understand that. Yeah. And if it's you're not ready yet, let's also be willing to look you in the face and go, I don't know that you're ready to take this to that audience. Is it really the right audience for this message? Because even if, even if you have a slideshow, like if we do have some sort of pre-made slideshow for modularity and you have no idea what the heck modularity is, you're going to be standing up, you might be standing up there looking at it and be like, well, this says we have this thing called modularity and it is good. And uh, so... I, I think I think having pre-made resources is a very good thing because it can help you like, okay, I know a little of what modularity is and I might would be able to talk about it if I had some more resources because all I know really is what it is and it lets you install different versions of package of packages or I guess they they call them streams, but. I don't really know enough that I could just say I'm going to go talk about modularity, but with resources, probably could. But like Bex was saying, sometimes I think you just have to go based on what you're familiar with, too. And with regard to events, there's also trying to recruit people to come to the event. Like um, last year, I was planning uh, Lisa which I forgot what it stands for. Large Installation System Administration, I think. Um, and so I, we were trying to plan it, and I was like, well, this conference is about systems administration. Why don't I get someone from Fedora Infra to come, um, be a, to come help at that event? So Ricky Elrod, who is an ambassador but doesn't do a whole lot with ambassadors. I got a hold of him and he said, yeah, sure he would come. And so it were, sometimes it can be useful to get people with certain knowledge, depending on what the target of the event is. Actually, that's one of the other points I want to hit uh, in the ambassador's ground is that maybe you are willing to talk and you want to organize events, but you, it's, it's, impo it's impossible that you are the one that know everything in the project, every objective, every Python seek, every working group, but you need be to be able to know how to reach them. And if you don't know, at least you, s you should be able to go to the join seek that's supposed to have these objectives to lead people oh. into the right groups. And then they can tell you, you know what? You need to talk with this guy. And we also possibly could make some sort of wiki page or something of who might be interested in talking, speaking about X, Y, Z. Yeah, maybe why not? Maybe just do a list. You know what? We are looking for people that is willing to help in a talk. If you have a topic, just put it yourself in there. Yeah. That, that's good, a good idea. It doesn't have to be them committing to doing it anytime someone asks, but just a list of, hey, I might be interested in doing this. So a, a, li a list of people to contact and say, hey, I'm thinking about that we should do whatever. Would you be interested in coming speaking here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or even like we didn't have a talk at Lisa, but we focused on Fedora server at our table. So, um, personal preference, I prefer to do things rather than build infrastructure. Um, I did an event last year in Lithuania. Uh, it wasn't funded from Fedora's money, but it was for Fedora. Um, and I literally sent an email out to DevelList, and I said, hey, we're going to this event. These are the topics we want to hit. 
two people I had never met in the Fedora community came forward and said, hey, we can do this. This is our bona fides. This is why we're qualified to talk to this particular audience. We all went to Lithuania. We had a fantastic booth talking to a bunch of generally closed source developers who were terribly interested in what we had to say. Um, but I didn't know who, like, I, I didn't know who to go to in our community to find out who has a, a background working with .NET or, or working in closed source C Sharp shop. But instead, I asked a set of questions over to Vellis. Like, let's use the resources we already have. We have this amazing community. If the ambassador generates the event, put it out there. Um, I know you, I saw some of your emails, and so I don't want to. I don't want to anger you by making it sound stupidly easy, because I watched you struggle, and I wasn't just watching you struggle with amusement. Um, yeah. But like, I did watch you struggle to try and gather the right kind of information. And what that really felt more like to me was we as a community weren't ready to address a college audience. And that's something that I would much prefer to say, hey, is Mindshare, we think that's important. We're going to raise an objective around that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I just wanted to mention. So just say, we, we have about five, five minutes, minutes left. Yeah, so that's what I was going to mention. Like, since, even though I know I brought that up, but we, since we don't have a ticketed item for that, I was also, one thing I wanted to try to fit in for this session was to talk about our workflow as Mindshare committee, because I've noticed that we've kind of had I don't know if it's just been like the recent last few months, but I feel like we've kind of stagnated with some of our our response time for tickets and other items on our on our own personal agenda. So I was wanting to try to find some room for discussion of ways of our own workflow and like as I was looking at the ticket queue and there's a lot of tickets that that we still have uh, that haven't been responded to or we haven't had a chance to revisit or go back to. And it's like I know like we're doing like, this is this reminds me of our fad when we had a lot of like really strong great ideas. And we, we left the fad with those, and we were we note, but we weren't able to keep that momentum rolling after the fad as much. So I was just trying to think of ways we could try to streamline that and make some of our own work more visible. And I don't know, I just wanted to kind of open that topic. I think I just need to pay attention to Pagger more. <laughs> I mean, but I, I don't well, think it's just that's individually just a single person. Yeah. Like... Oh, our meeting win is good. So I th I think there's a couple of things there. Now that you've opened the opened the proverbial can of worms, I'm gonna I'm gonna wiggle a little bit. Um, num number one is we've got to have people show up to meetings, and uh, find a meeting time that works. So if if you're on Mindshare and you have not filled this out yet, get it filled out. Hopefully we, everybody in the room has. Do we have any times that work for everyone? The, the larger point is, I see five responses, arguably six, because I set them. That's not everybody. Right. The, the second thing I was going to point out is, is we need to be better at responding to email to each other on the, on, the, on the mailing list. And third, we need to be better about reporting what we're doing. If it's not monthly, at least every other month, have a report and say, hey, this is what Mindshare is doing. We've done none of, none of those things. Since we consistently have a difficult time with scheduling a meeting and trying to drive our work through meetings, and especially since this group is trying to do this interna international representation of the entire world, like this is why I'm trying to figure out, like, does a meeting-driven body make sense for this group? If we have a difficult time finding a single hour or even 30 minutes for us all to be sitting down at the keyboard, does it make sense for us to try to experiment with a different like we're using a ticket driven workflow but can we do that asynchronously like now it's back on um i'm 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 happy to experiment on on asynchronous workflows i'm concerned that that it's only going to make things worse rather than than make things better um but yeah, let's let's experiment and try. <laughs>